I felt real lousy about Hennessy. The next weekend, I went to Rowena's again. She didn't even remember me. She acted like I was a stranger or something. I tell her about Hennessy doing it with another guy. Maybe getting five years in jail for it. She says, well, I haven't got too much sympathy for their kind, sweetheart. They just take the bread and the mouth of my babies. I tell you, I'm never paying for it again. It just cheapens the whole idea of sex. I was determined to meet the perfect girl. And I knew just what she'd be like. She'd be pretty, but not too beautiful. When they're too beautiful, they love them first and you second. And she'd be athletic. Somebody could hit fly balls, too. And she'd catch every one of them. And she'd love to go to movies, read books, see plays. And we'd never run out of conversation. She's out there. I know it. Right now, the girl I'm going to fall in love with is living in uh, New York, or Boston, or Philadelphia, walking around the streets, not even knowing that I'm alive. It's crazy. And there she is. And here I am. The two of us, just waiting to meet. Why doesn't she just say, Eugene, I'm here. Come and get me. Hello? Hi. Would you care to dance? Oh, well, me? Oh, well, I don't dance very well. Well, I bet you do. No, honest, I never dance. Well, then why don't you come to a dance? That's a logical question. Oh, uh, well, because I like to talk. And I was hoping I'd meet someone I felt like talking to. Well, we could talk while we dance. Uh, it's hard for me, because I'm always counting when I dance. <laughs> Whatever you said, I would answer one, two, one, two. <laughs> well, I'll only ask you mathematical questions, then. I bet you didn't know how to march before you got into the army. No, I didn't. Well, if you could learn to march, you could learn to dance. Yeah, except if I didn't learn to march, I'd be doing push-ups until I was 83. <laughs> uh, I'm not that strict. But if it does make you that uncomfortable, uh, I won't intrude on your privacy. It was very nice meeting you. Goodbye. OK. OK what? Oh, one, two, one, two. <laughs> Are you sure? Positive. Oh, good. <coughs> now, now all I have to, have to do is step into place, right? Right. <coughs> one, two, one, two. Well, you're doing fine. Well, except your lips are moving. Oh, if my lips don't move, my feet don't move. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you try talking <coughs> instead of counting? Okay. My name is Jean. One, two. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. We're making headway. Is it just plain Jean? Well, if you want the long version, it's Eugene Morris Jerome. What's yours? Daisy. Daisy, that's funny. Daisy's my favorite character in literature. Daisy Miller or Daisy Buchanan? Buchanan. The Great Gatsby is one of the all-time great books. Well, actually, I never read Daisy Miller. Is it any good? Oh, it's wonderful. Although I prefer The Great Gatsby. New York must have been thrilling in the 20s. It was, it was. That's where I'm from. Well, I only saw a little bit from my baby carriage, but it's still a terrific <laughs> city. Uh, what else? What else what? Uh, what? What other books have you read? I mean, you don't just read books with days in the title, do you? No. Well, I read books with Anna in the title, too. Anna Karenna Nunn. Anna Christie. Well, that was a play by O'Neill. Eugene O'Neill. Playwrights named Eugene are usually my favorite. <coughs> oh, listen, can we sit down? I've stepped on your toes three times already and you haven't said a word. You deserve a break. Yeah. I can't believe I'm having a conversation like this in Biloxi, Mississippi. Well, you don't like Biloxi? Oh, it's not a bad town. It's, uh, it's all right. It's okay. I hate it. <laughs> I'm not that fond of it myself. Actually, I'm from Gulfport. Well, we all are. Gulfport? No kid. You know, I know a girl from Gulfport. Really? Well, who is she? Maybe I know her. Oh, no, I doubt it. <laughs> She's in the clothing business. <laughs> uh, so, do you go to school there? Mm -hmm. St. Mary's. It's Catholic. <coughs> an all-girls school. <laughs> uh, I really have to move on. We're supposed to mingle. You see, if we're with anyone for more than 10 minutes, the sisters get really nervous. Oh, but it hasn't been 10 minutes yet. Please, I really like talking to you. Well, just a few minutes. Oh, oh can I get you a Coke or something? Well, it's way on the other side of the room. You could use up at least a minute and a half getting it. You're right. Let the next guy get you a Coke. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, I know this is going to sound a little prejudiced, but well, I didn't think there were any girls from the South like you. 
I mean, so easy to talk to. <laughs> they are, believe me. Anyway, I'm not really from the South. I was raised in Chicago. Well, my father used to work on a newspaper there. But then he got a job in New Orleans on the Examiner, city editor. But he took six months off first to write a book. Your father's a writer? Mm -hmm. That's incredible, because that's what I want to be. Listen, uh, not to get off the subject or anything, but would it offend you if I, I told you I thought you were extremely pretty? <laughs> No, well, why should it? I like it when boys think I'm pretty. Do a lot of boys think you're pretty? Well, I hope so, but they don't always say it. Well, they get very shy around me. <laughs> my dad thinks that I intimidate boys my own age. Well, I'm glad you don't seem intimidated. Well, no, I told you I'm from New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of writer do you want to be? I don't know yet. So far, all I've written are a few short stories uh, and my memoirs. I keep a notebook and write down all my thoughts when I feel about things. I, I've been doing it since I was a kid. My father kept a journal <laughs> the last few years, too. Well, that's how I got to write this book. You know, I read that that's a very good way to become a writer. Well, a few people read my memoirs, and they were very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sister Maurice is glaring at me across the room. I really should see if someone else wants to dance. I had a very nice time talking to you, Jean. Morris to Rome, right? Well, I'm trying to remember your whole name, in case I ever see it in print someday. Oh, you didn't tell me your whole name, in case I ever wanted to write a letter to a St. Mary's Catholic all girls' school in Gulfport? Hannigan. Daisy Hannigan. Daisy Hannigan. Now, that's a great name. F. Scott Fitzgerald should have thought of that before we began it. <laughs> you have my permission to use it. I wouldn't mind at all being immortalized. Goodbye, Eugene. Goodbye, Daisy. God. Every time I say the name, I feel like I'm speaking literature. <laughs> You know, you say nice things. As a matter of fact, oh, you didn't say one wrong thing in that entire conversation. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, at last! Something to live for! <laughs> Oh, Daisy Hannigan. Oh, just try saying that name to yourself. See if you don't fall in love. I know I had to see her again. When she smiled at me, I had tiny little heart attacks. <laughs> well, not enough to kill you. Just enough to keep you from walking straight. Daisy Hannigan. One, two.